Hi, it's Alistair here from Revolution Infosec. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today's video is a little bit of a techie guide for those of you who like to play around with security software. For today's video, we're going to be using OpenVAS, or rather, we're going to be installing OpenVAS. What is OpenVAS, I hear you ask? Well, that's a very good question. Let me switch over to my display, and I'll show you what I've got here. So Greenbone OpenVAS, as it's known, is basically an open source fork of Nessus. And Nessus is a very, very well-revered product. It's been around for a very, very long time, and it's pretty much now known as the market leader in vulnerability scanning. So if you've got a client and you want to check them for vulnerabilities, both on their internal network and potentially now on their external facing um, IP addresses, this is probably the, the go-to software product that is used worldwide. But back in the day, a very, very long time ago, when I probably had hair, Tenable, or Nessus as it was then, basically was a free product, as were many products in the security field. There were a lot of open source products. So around about 2005, OpenVAS was created because Nessus went to become a corporate or enterprise product, and it was expensive, and you had to pay for licenses. So to combat that, they forked the open source version of Nessus at that point in time, and it became known as OpenVAS. And around about that time, I think it was 2006, 2008, there you go, 2008, Greenbone Networks developed the product and then drove it forward into the modern day. So Greenbone are basically the company behind uh, OpenVAS or the organization behind OpenVAS. So basically, you're getting pretty much what Tenable provides you for free. And if we have a look at this this random website I googled, we can see that you know there's a massive increase in um, CVEs, and it's just keeping on going and going on. CVEs, by the way, is the amount of the, the vulnerabilities, the common vulnerabilities. And so obviously, the way that we detect these vulnerabilities is to use a vulnerability scanner. This particular website here has a as basically a, an overview of. Uh, tenable versus OpenVAS, and you can see here how it works and what it looks like and what both products looks like. This is the Kali Linux scan on Nessus here. But ultimately, um, the good thing about OpenVAS obviously is the price, and it says here that basically OpenVAS is a bit rough around the edges, but ultimately it gives you pretty much the same sort of thing. It has update feeds so that it's kept up to date with the latest CVEs and so forth. So it's really quite handy from that perspective. Functionality, it says X, and product updates, it says X. That's I would say that's not entirely true. Functionality, yeah, I've got to say the functionality is not as simple, out of the box, easy to use as Nessus, but certainly product updates, all you have to do is an apt, apt get update and an upgrade, and then your uh, OpenVAS uh, will be updated and you only have to run the update command inside OpenVAS to get the latest updates. So I use a cron job to keep those updates intact. So today's video is really all about how to install OpenVAS, which is the techie part, really. It's the hardest part. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of how OpenVAS is used, or Greenbone, whichever way you want to call it. So without further ado, I'm going to get right to that right now. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is make sure that our Kali Linux distribution is up to date. You can do this with other Linux distributions, but I, um, I'm using Kali Linux here. It's probably the easiest way to get started on this. So sudo apt update and and or ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade is the way to get your system updated with all of the latest from the Kali Linux repo. Same process for um, other distributions that are based on Debian. So the next thing we want to do is install GVM itself, which is sudo apt install GVM. And uh, that process is pretty quick to run. So once we've done that, then we want to do sudo GVM dash setup. So we'll do that now. And this runs pretty quickly again, this part. It'll set up a Postgres database, it'll set up the various tables in there, get the various um, commands run, and then 
it uh, starts on downloading the feeds from various different places. So this is the part which I put in a cron job for later. It basically set a, sets it up with all the latest feeds. You'll also notice that I'm copying and pasting here an admin password. So make sure you do the same. It will create a, a password randomly. You need to know that password for when you log into the dashboard later on. So yeah, just change that password later on. Don't forget to do that. But this is the temporary password that it's generated for you now. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is run sudo gvm dash check dash setup. And this will just go through all of the things that have been set up. That whole process before where it downloaded the, the SCAP and the CVE and the CERT updates, that process takes about 25, 30 minutes to me. Um, it's quite a while. So by the time you've gotten here, you've probably had a good old cup of tea uh, or coffee and um, checked over things. And then eventually, hopefully, you get to this stage where you just do this final last check. There's about seven steps here, and then once that's done, then it should come back and say everything has checked out okay. Unfortunately, that's not the end of the story, as you will see, and it's these little last steps which uh, make this a bit harder. But you can see here, I got through the uh, nine steps here, and it seems to look like your GVM installation is okay. So that sounds good, that sounds very promising, but as you're about to see, there are a few little extra gotchas which you need to take in order to make GVM work properly and start up with your machine every time. So let's have a look at this first of all. sudo gvm-start will start the service apparently, but it says here that the services are already running. So then if we do gvm stop, it shows us a slightly different story. It shows us that all the services are all disabled. Okay, so we want to probably enable those services. And the way we want to do that is using systemctl. Now, however, what I will show you is to use the initial service. We'll start that up on its own and we'll give it an amount of time to synchronize. And the way that you know that it's synchronizing is if you do ps ax grep, pipe grep and grep for gvm and you'll see that it, gvmd is syncing. And on my slow little machine here, this process took a very long time and the CPU was running away and that's why I knew it's still running. Um, but if you run top or htop or something like that, in fact, there's btop here as well, which I will show you in just a second, you'll see the Postgres process churning away as it's, as it's synchronizing information from uh, GVM. So basically let that process run and that will synchronize everything up till it's ready. You can see that the uh, GVMD process here in um, BTOP is running away quite heavily. So once you, you're, you see that there's no syncing process going on, then it's time to do a GVM stop and enable the rest of the services. So that's what I'll show you what I'm doing right now. So once now that I'm sure that all the services have synced up, I do GVM, pseudo GVM dash stop. And then you can see all these disabled services, only that one enabled service that I've installed that I've enabled already. So let's go about doing a pseudo system CTL enable and enable all of those services. So I just scroll up and copy and paste basically the name of all those services, the Nota scanner, the OSPD, open vast service and so on and so forth. I'll just copy and paste all of those from the list there. Uh, GVMD is already enabled, but GSAD isn't, so I'll just do that as the last one. Okay, they're all enabled now, and so we can start them up with just GVM, pseudo GVM dash start. And you can see now you're getting a different message saying that the GVM services are about to start because they're all enabled. And once that's done, it's automatically going to fire us up into a web browser um, on the local host. The, the web server is running on the local host. You can enable it to listen on other ports, but by default, it will just listen on the local host. Now, obviously, here you're getting a security risk. That's just because the certificate is self-signed. It is an HTTPS system. So we can just log in as admin and bear in mind that password that we got earlier on in the early stages. There's the password. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And of course, we don't want to save that. So let's click off of that and then go into what we would think you would change it in users under administration. Nope, that's not where you change it. In fact, this, this 
tab is pretty useless. So if we go up to the icon up in the top right there, the person icon, click on My Settings, you'll see there's a little Edit button up the top left there, and you can see we can paste in our old password or the current password, and then put in a new password, which is suitably secure. Then press Save, and I'll just log out just to verify that that new password has taken. So admin being the username, that's always how it's set up then pop my new password in and of course there we are. So the dashboard's quite cool. I mean, it may look nothing like the Nessus one. It might not look as sophisticated, but down there in the corner, you can see the CVEs by creation time. You can see the growth of CVEs over the years. And that's quite a nice little visual, I think, to begin with. This is where you probably spend most of your time. This is the tasks view. There's a basic task wizard here on the left and it just allows you to um, really scan a particular IP address really quickly. But the advanced task wizard is a bit more helpful. So we set up a task name, and um, we'll call it LAN scan or something like that, right? And then we can choose which type of scan config, we'll just leave it as full and fast. And I'll choose the range of IP addresses that I wanna scan. In this case, I'll scan my home network, 192.168. 24 we could also do 0.1 to 192.168.0.254 to do the same. And then we'll just start immediately and we'll do the full and fast scan. So off that goes. Whilst that scan is running, let's have a look at the various other tools in here. So the second for allows you to view all of the different feeds that have come in and you can see it's, it's sorted by published here and you can see the very latest CVEs in that list. You can also sort by severity, so you can see the most severe CVEs and so forth. It's also got NVTs and so forth, so it really shows you that this product is being kept up to date, has the latest vulnerability databases, and is updatable anytime you actually like. And that's why I said earlier on, you can use your cron system to keep it up to date. Going back to the scan, we'll have a look at what it does there. You can have a summary of the scan information, and of course, um, you can press stop to stop the scan. There's the start and edit task button. There's also a clone button there, so which can be quite helpful. On the different scan types that you can have, that was a full and fast scan. But if we look here, we can go into a new scan or a new task, I should say. Um, and then down at the um, scan config type, you can, well, you can see the current scan um, target, first of all, it's kept it from the last scan. But if we go there, uh, we can do full and fast, we can do base, discovery, we can do all sorts of different scan types, which really help us do different tasks. Now, anyway, the scan's done, so I'm gonna review the scan report. So to do that, we click on um, scans, and then we click on reports. And then we can see the, the dashboard view again, which is really nice. And we can click on this particular scan that we've just done. And it shows you all these tabs across the top, results, hosts, ports, and so forth. So we'll go into results and you can see, for example, I've got an FTP with an unencrypted clear text login. Don't worry, that's deliberate, so I'm not, I'm not shocked by that. But you can see that these have already found a bunch of vulnerabilities on the home network. We can click on ports, it found these in particular ports, it's, it found particular applications, it found these particular operating systems, it found one particular CVE, and so forth. So that's a very, very quick introduction to the installation process and also the operation of the Greenbone OpenVAS system. I do hope you've enjoyed this guide. If you have, please press like, please subscribe to the channel, and until the next video, Take care and I'll see you soon.